So, what's up, guys? Spore Hacker here, and uh, yeah, well, today is a special day. It's the first time I actually tried this kind of format, and uh, yeah, what I'm basically going to do here is uh, only share uh, some of my uh, some of my uh, yeah work in progress on uh, Twitter at uh, AJ. And uh, yeah, today we can find out this how this is going to work. It's the first time I'm doing this kind of live stream, so uh, let's find out. So, what we did uh, before it. Let's see. How does this work? Ah, here. Basically, did uh, the, the previous days is uh, yeah. Basically making up uh, first I, I usually make a page list like uh, I can show here before I start out I also always start the summary after that first uh, page list therefore we can go to a uh, list to, uh, page list plus plot I usually start like this like I did with page 2 and uh, after that I uh, go go on and write the first issue according to my outline and uh, yeah what we do right now is uh, that's uh, something I deviate from uh, the last time this this issue here issue uh, 9 9 the hunter part 5 was uh, more of an uh, of a freestyle uh, writing and I kind of uh, kind of part of a flashback story that uh, will uh, start at around the uh, Issue uh, five. So uh, yeah, what we're going to do today is that's quite fun. We're going to add some panel descriptions, and yeah, the first one's going to be quite easy. Go to page one. This will be the before outline. This is who I am. General Warrior issue nine, Night of the part five. Copyright by me, of course. Story by me. And the uh, good news is, the first issue is 80% uh, uh, ready, minus the cover. So if you want to check out what I'm doing, go to Twitter, and check out my uh, check out uh, Neff's artwork on Twitter and DeviantArt and other places. He's quite good. In fact, he's excellent. Yeah, here's what I did. Start out like this. Page one. We'll be open with the, with the splash page and the, yeah, with the city of Mayapan during its uh, glory days. And uh, yeah, some info on it, but the uh, majority will be uh, yeah, set of uh, similar to what uh, it's going to be quite similar to what uh, yeah, what a friend of my, what a friend or fellow writer did, who's a little more advanced than I am. But here we go with uh, page one. So yeah, splash page that shows the city of Mayapan in its glory days. And uh, yeah, the fact is, yeah, the, the plus minus 3600 uh, buildings and uh, yeah, 12,000 inhabitants within the city, and 5,000 outside the city walls are not a lie. That's actually well documented by historians and there's overall consensus in between. So, uh, I kind of did it already, so uh, this panel 1, the splash page, the city of my pun since glory days in the post classic period from uh, 900 uh, Adomne till uh, 14, uh, 41, 1461 Adomne, when, uh, when the Tutu Sioux decided to, uh, inv decided to, yeah, but also because they had to, uh, they were forced to uh, stay within the city walls, or at least, uh, some of their uh, nobles and elites, also their priests, so uh, yeah. So they decided to revolt and they killed everyone, with the exception of uh, what I guess I've written here. Two of the, yeah, just one uh, guy or Lars who uh, went for Honduras for trade nego negotiations. And uh, yeah, I said in this, this is not a lie, I envy that soul, for real. So we're here, the city of uh, Mayapan, in its glory days. 
and uh, yeah, as you see, those mines, those mines 3600 buildings, large pier known as El Castillo, similar to the ones that you find in uh, Chichen Itza, but uh, less, a uh, little smaller. And yeah, it's also a walled city, so uh, yeah. Why the wall was built, it's probably because uh, they were uh, expected for, against uh, potential attacks by uh, rifling tribes or by uh, rifling members of the league, who knows. Kind of shame that uh, Mayapan fell in 1441, 1461 AD at Domine. Because uh, the Aztecs also traded with him, or the Mexica. And uh, yeah, they wanted to uh, potentially uh, use him as a vassal state in the near future, because they were cultur culturally, uh, yeah, it's quite some things in common. Yeah, this uh, well, as you can see, ancient mines are seen walking through the city plaza within the walls. Men, women, priests, no soldiers wa are walking through the city, marching past Americans, craftsmen trying to sell the quest of theirs. In other words, there's a lot of things going on. But in this case, a, split, a splash page will uh, suffice. Page, page 2 contains another splash page. And yeah, that it shows uh, the and establishes the world outside uh, the city walls, featuring a Dutch roofed uh, Mayan settlement. They were basically there. The settlements outside of the city walls were kind of uh, made of uh, yeah, lesser materials than stone, like uh, hard mud, wood, and uh, yeah, with uh, thatched roofs. Pretty great. But, uh, yeah, I have received a message. I don't know. Probably missed something. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, here. You see uh, what the life was outside the city walls. Yeah, it's usually uh, yeah used by farm, by farmers, agricultural slaves. They were growing uh, crops like maize, squash, beans, tobacco, peppers, and even tomatoes. They were one of the first tribes to actually grew them. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting. And yeah, this is not a lie either. They practiced slavery long before the European conquistadors, or conquistadores, arrived at the coast of Yucatan, or, for, or uh, Mexico, plus the coast of Cozumel. And from I've, what I've known is they uh, they were not they didn't receive a warm welcome because uh, yeah, some of them got sacrificed, some of the Spanish got sacrificed. So uh, here we go to page three. This is where we're going to uh, add our first, uh, yeah, our first uh, bell description. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a copy paste from this one, but uh, see how do we show you how it works. Also. said it's a kind of new format for me so I'm not really familiar with it but uh, yeah here's uh, page 3 it's uh, yeah a kind of aspiring comic book my name is AJ Ho this is uh, yeah a kind of aspiring to be a comic creator it's not something I uh, started out as my uh, background is in applied sciences but also a lot of history so uh, yeah this is one of the projects that I'm trying to uh, built upon with a hard working friend and artist. So what we're going to do now is suddenly one I only show uh, one to two uh, actions in one panel. Suddenly one of the mill slaves and his two children. Look up at the skies. There we go, I know. <laughs> Look to the skies. Skies. And what happens? And they see what they see there. They see the white light of the Jack of the North. It's actually Jack. 
and the red jug of the east called the Chakchi jug, not to be confused with the ruler of Chichen Itza at the time. So it's kind of a title that was given to them, similar to Ashkanek, Ashkin, Halakwinig. I probably misspelled the name, my apologies in advance, but here we go, to the next one. And they see the child, so, uh, man, Adel Mill, and two children see the white lightning of the jack of the north and the red lightning of the jack of the, jack of the east in the skies. Flying through the skies. Nice. So, what's happening next? Go to the next, just kind of how I do things. Then, uh, yeah, and it's followed by a. Uh, Followed by dark clouds that look like a bird change of water snakes instead of stars in the galaxy. So, what we can do now. Oops. Down three. And uh, at this point, it gets interesting because the Red Shark will ask. I'm already reading from this. It's full. This is a separate action. Once again, I tried to put it uh, like uh, Neff, my artist, told me. Keep it at uh, one or two actions per panel. I made a mistake uh, when I was just starting out that I put uh, way too much uh, things into one. It needs to be a moment, like a like a mo like just one uh, yeah moment in time that uh, can only take uh, yeah in a visual medium like this. You can only use uh, one to two actions. So. Red Jack asks if the White Jack will do the honors. His hands are full. So we can add some dialogue. I'll probably uh, use this. Uh, Jack. His name was Jack Sheep Jack. Very confused with the ruler. Of the, the then ruler of Chichen Itza, according to the Chilambalan, he asked. Why is there an X here? Um, yeah. Let's say approach. Honors Mr. White. <laughs> My hands are full. His hands are full. Or better said. Hands are Or more like this. I've got my It is simple. Up to Shabby. So uh, here. What comes next is uh oh yeah. Question mark. Always important. Hands full. And uh, yeah. What happens next is uh go to the fourth panel. So is not a separate action that I'm trying to do. And here we go, it's and the white shark. There's a groundbreaker at the dark clouds for the dark clouds. Rain. Rain. I figured out this is a supernatural story set in uh, Mesoamerica. And it uh, takes a lot of inspiration from uh, the Mayan mythology. Mostly classic period, but uh, 
mostly, I mean, post classic, but also uh, some elements of classic period. Of the classic period. So uh, yeah, yeah. It gives you some context who uh, Chuck is. Chuck is a god of rain from uh, the Mayans. The Mexican noon is Tlaloc, and the, and the, the Toltecs as well. It's Tlaloc, the god of rain. The only difference is that uh, the Mayans believe that uh, Chuck uh, cast rain, cast rain by uh, either throwing his one of his uh, throwing axes uh, of stone or jade through the clouds and uh, start pouring down, or they he simply threw a water snake at the clouds. They all stay. Take, uh, yeah, play a role in this story. The difference is with the Chilamban that uh, yeah, Jack didn't play an active role in it. Just it was just mentioned in the prophecy of the Rain God when Hunakil uh, managed to climb out of the Holy Zonot. So uh, yeah, here's here's the other one. So uh, yeah, this time I try to uh, since public domain I can do what I want. I can I direct him to the front lines. So, so yeah, he throws his, uh, the white jack throws his uh, groundbreaker at the clouds, for the rain. What can do next? Commands full, so, uh, and sucks in Chuck. In fact, Chuck would also split himself into two different beings. Are four different beings. He's representing uh, the direction of uh, the winds. So uh, the black chalk is the chalk of the west. The north is the white chalk. South is yellow, and uh, east is red. So yeah, you can also uh, yeah, he basically has to deal with four or three voices uh, in his head. They all have uh, yeah, it's uh, an individual and a collective conscious. So yeah, Sakjip Chak says, uh, with pleasure. <laughs> pleasure. So he, with pleasure. And he throws the... And he throws, yeah. Then the clouds. What happens next is, yeah, this is actually part of the mythology as well. One of the elements. And what happens next is, rain pours from the skies of... And the uh, agriculture slave, she was slave, spoil again. Just running out of this. Born from the skies, and uh, yeah, farmers. Their hands into the sky to thank the rain gods. I can soak, I can soak the, with uh, water, and to the crops see the next. And let's say uh, water supply to uh, grow. Because, uh, yeah, crops like tomatoes, etc., they need a lot of water. F certain fruits as well need a lot of water to, uh, to grow. And yeah, page four is in, uh, once again another splash page. So uh, we're just going to lead to. Uh, there's four panels here, there's six panels, but it's five here. We had their uh, splash. So, uh, yeah. Let's see if it, uh, the thing is. Uh, if it's live. Yeah, we're live. Okay. I know. I'm uh, 
Not the best at this, but uh, I'm trying. Page 4 is now Splash. One of the soldiers of the Ruin Kokom. It was uh, the, one of the three, uh, three families of the League of Mayapan. It was uh, founded in uh, around uh, 900 by uh, Ahmekat Tutusiu from the Tutusiu in Uxmal and Mani. And uh, yeah, at one point the Toltecs also had uh, major influence over there, either through trade or to uh, have influence through uh, trade or to uh, through potential warfare. And uh, either way, yeah, the Toltecs also caused the fall of Teotihuacan to some historical and uh, no historical sources. I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, yeah. Eventually they were it was a league of three uh, families and eventually they all claimed to be descendants of the Toltecs. Of uh, also of an uh, half god king known as Quetzalcoatl or Kukukan. So uh, yeah it's not splash but uh, let's back right to page four. I'll splash page, one of the soldiers. So yeah, once again, kind of obvious what I'm trying to do. One of the soldiers of the Ruin Kokom family is uh, seen patrolling in front of the city walls in the rain, just before lunch hour, so it's uh, during the day. And uh, yeah, James Carr is wearing full body armor, some seeing spear in his right hand, a spectacular shield. With a white dove painted on it. Because, uh, yeah, the Kokom, some people think it means uh, dove. But, yeah. But, yeah, it's important. It could be, mean, uh, yeah, he would listen carefully. So, uh, yeah, I said, uh, I decided to give it to the white dove just to uh, distinguish him more from the, the armies of uh, Chichen Itza and from the eventual. Uh, eventual uh, Fictional, uh, re fictional, yeah, tribe known as uh, Scorpios. So uh, yeah, one soldier of the Rukukom family is seen patrolling in front of the city walls in the rain. So it's still pouring. It's for lunch hour and the changing of the guard. So uh, yeah, once again, page four. Just good as uh, done. Here I'm going to uh, rewrite certain elements. The part from page 4 was by another elderly guard named Hai. And, uh, and uh, yeah, what happens next is. Uh, There's one eye missing. I decided to give it some fun, have some fun with it. So add some, uh, yeah. With uh, a little hard and uh, immense to it, so yeah. That's what we can do now. The guard from page 4 passed by another LE guard named I. One eye missing. He asked, and uh, yeah. First guard. Uh, I just can't guard page 4 for now. Well, there's a more. Morning, Mr. High. What's guard duty going to? Four. Of course, yeah. Have a little discussion. And uh, yeah, what's gonna happen next is the car can. Elder card. Hi, Elder card. Steve. Steve. And, uh, yeah. 
and shows his route and shows his uh, foot in a yeah, rectangular shield because uh, unlike uh, the Mexican Coltex, they uh, mines mostly used the rectangular shields. It was made of wood with uh, yeah, reinforced uh, hides. But oh yeah, certain types of paint. And uh, yeah, kind of decorations on it. So uh, yeah, we're going to Steve and shows his wooden rectangular shield. Which I tried to keep it visual, but it's completely ruined. Rainwater, by the rainwater. Which is completely ruined. Thank you. But the correct. All the guards were crying to see. And shows the wooden rectangular shield, which is completely ruined and so by the rainwater. Yeah. Well, where did that come from? So we've gone so high. So I just do, uh, yeah. I hate this. I hate this kind. Of, I hate these kind of patrols. I hate this kind. It's completely ruined my shield. It's completely, it completely ruined my shield. My shield. Yeah, beyond repair. <laughs> so, uh, first, I'm going to check how many words it is. I try to keep it at uh, 25 uh, words per panel because I want the art to shine through. And 18 is a nice round number. So, uh, So, uh, yeah. Down three. Start from, start from page four. Je Joe said, yeah. Maybe the metallurgist can come up with some sustainable material for weaponry. So, the other guy from, from the fourth page, Joe said, uh, The elder guard grants the shows so by the rainwater. It's just off the wood rot. Yeah. Hmm. Pro which you probably forgot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's something I'm, tr I'm also going to add to this. this uh, Look out from four page. Now you can let it come for sustainable weaponry. Why is copper? <laughs> so, yeah. Shield still intact, and shield too, too high. Still intact. Uh, like I said, there's no uh, set format for writing uh, comic book scripts. I went with the Dark Horse format because uh, yeah, it suited my needs. What I could do. But yeah, there are others who use uh, the full uh, full script or uh, plot first. I prefer to do it like this because it gives me uh, 
kind of structure, but uh, yeah, there is no right or wrong in it. Some people prefer, yeah, pages with, uh, yeah, one panel is one page. Some people like Alan Moore did it, but uh, I like it more like this. It's more uh, minimalistic. But, yeah, more simple as well. So, so, and what is what he's now doing is. Joe's made it to disappear. So first we can do a change this letter to capital. And Joe's maybe the methodologies could come up with more stain with here for weapon like this copper. Well the thing for copper is once it gets exposed to for way too long to water, it starts to uh, yeah it oxidizes and starts to form a, yeah, a green uh, layer on it like a copper uh, I think it's copper uh, I don't know the exact name I kind of forgot it but uh, yeah to, protect, to get an extra layer of protection you can, you can also uh, clean it certain, yeah and kind of chemical the guard from page 4 shows the shield too high still intact and just the many dermatologists can So yeah, once again, card page four. Just, uh, yeah, yeah. It's another word, but I need to look it up. English. English. Varnish, yes. I have the right word. Varnish. I'm going to uh, use tools and at the word count. Now I'm going to add something here. Which meant full. He didn't. Full. <laughs> <Full. laughs> the disrespect, like uh, an artist would uh, say, would tell me. A little more sustainable, like copper, like it's copper. Up. And, ah yes, now I remember what the green layer is called. It's called copper oxide. This, this uh, too much. So uh, this one is not uh, really needed. So uh, I'll leave it like this. Probably oh, forgot to add a layer varnish. You all fool. Maybe metallurgist. Copper. And uh, yeah, this discussion goes on for quite a while. <laughs> so 
Chill here. Close this yeah. Only remaining. Hi, because he yeah, because he realized that uh, yeah, he should have thought about it. So uh, next turn, uh, yeah. Something for what we like to go. So yeah, I'm going to once again uh, copy uh, paste this to uh, this. And, uh, yeah. Very clever youngster. A metallurgist. Yes. I'm trying to. It's kind of a new. It's kind of a. Uh, kind of experimenting with it because I'm not really familiar with live stream, but so far on it uh, doesn't look that bad after all. And uh, yeah. Use that uh, and uh, yeah. Heck, another good idea. The pop X, the traitor. Pop X. West, the traitor to West. It's like uh, the Pasco region, etc. But I think, uh, yeah, the Toltec Empire. Though that uh, the Empire fell in uh, 1150 when the Chichimecas uh, decided to, uh, yeah, burn everything to the ground. According to uh, the legend of Tolan, it was, uh, yeah, Tezcatlipoca, the black, uh, the black Tezcatlipoca, that's how it's called. So I do throw, uh, yeah, say I got the of Waddle, so yeah. One read of the throne. And yeah, the castle is selling. That selling rivalry has been going on for quite some time, for uh, millennia. He decided to, yeah, first he tricked him to. Uh, I'll probably get. Uh, I don't know if YouTube is going to censor this. I don't know. But he first tricked him in drinking to trick. Like that's the Scotty Boca tricked to. What's a quadle or Bulgan in drinking too drinking too much? Uh, yeah, Bulgan. Uh, eventually, he had some uh, yeah quality time with his sister, and yeah, that's why uh, in issue uh, three or four, my bad, 
it'll be, uh, spoiler alert, it'll be, uh, it'll be discussed, but briefly, it's complicated. So yeah, very clever youngster, the dermatologist. Finesse. Only use that metal for ceremonial utilitarian objects, ornaments, and copper access to trade with Tolbit and Bonnie. So yeah. Go with I. I chose the part from four. New guy. Market. 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 What market? And what happens? What the weapon is called? It's known as uh, the Tlaxmalt Potsli. I hope I spelled the name correct. Kind of a uh, bronze axe. But uh, yeah, mostly the Mexican used obsidian because one, it was sharper. Yeah, it didn't and it didn't, uh, yeah, oxidize. For uh, yeah, no reason. So it's last seen out the pulse it was kind of a bronze axe. Either way, compare uh, the metallurgy skills of uh, yeah, of the Mexica and of the tribes of uh, Mesoamerica and the ones in uh, Latin America like uh, the Inca and the Chimu. I'll say yeah, I'm not saying that uh, yeah, one is superior over the other, but uh, yeah. The yeah, Essex used to, yeah, had another thing like that battle, Spear Thrower, and this one, but uh, yeah, it comes to, yeah, the Incas already entered the Bronze Age, and uh, yeah, the Mexicans were still uh, pretty much uh, in the Stone Age in that regard. They mostly used it for, yeah, ornaments. Things like gold didn't have that much of a meaning to them, it was more like an ornament than uh, actual value. They valued things like uh, cacao. So things like uh, yeah, like hides, like feathers from the quetzal, obsidian of course, copper, copper axes, and uh, yeah, also cacao beans. And yeah, here I should carve a base for new guy that he bought on the market. That's him importantly. Bronze, bronze axe. Which name? Central Mexico. Um, yeah. Well, too bad. So, once again, we get to copy this. So, we from the West talking about the recent invention known as the. Now, let's get this, let's turn. Hi, shows him the weapon, but on the market. My fun. Oh. Oh, Good. 
my attention. Shields with, shields with this metal. I'm kind of risky with this. Let's see if they. Uh... Someone could find a way. Find, find a way to upgrade. Say loop. Now behold. The new invention now is trust me. Possibly, maybe someone could find a way to upgrade our shield with scalper. More. And maybe more. Who knows? And the first part is obviously. to copy this. So I'm gonna be sure I can a little fast from this but uh, I'll try to uh, Mako Weetle it's kind of a uh, wooden uh, Mako Weetle it's kind of a wooden uh, 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 obsidian spear. Make an obsidian spear instead. Sharper. It doesn't uh, oxidize. with an S, my bad. Once again, I don't believe I'm thanking Google this time, but I'm thanking, I'm thanking Google this time for this. <laughs> How to correct, even though they're not perfect, not at all. In fact, I uh, I don't always trust them, but uh, yeah. Currently, they, uh, they haven't done anything, uh, yeah. at least not yet. But, uh, yeah. This with uh, dogs that uh, got on my nerves. But uh, yeah, here we go. So uh, yeah. Part 4. Here you see the personal preference. I prefer the old fashioned. Which I did. I prefer the old 
touch them, too. Sharper. Sharper. It's nice in the rain. My former weapon is striking. Suit. And I'm not even shot with battle. Because, uh, oh, it's robot. So to switch to Roboto. Don't know why it did. But yeah, I'll change it uh, later on. I'll change the letter type later on. I didn't I change that suddenly, but uh <coughs> Here you see yeah, there's something you don't do, don't sit on this panel. This is that should be obvious from uh, the description, so uh rather off. Skins uh, here. Obsidian knife. Exposing the vital organs. The other card agrees. So, uh, yeah. So, here we go, uh, yeah. This is off panel. Yeah, the hack is like cold in Dutch, the exact English definition. But yeah, well, you once you use the skin of deer, so yeah, off panel. So we go to, uh, yeah, door page four, doing the same thing. We'll see.
nice too. I threw it through a chest. Oh, there is the other guard, there is gentleman. It's sentiment, so yeah. Human flesh. Oh yeah, it's more uh, it's supposed to. I've got one use of the skin up here. It's not cut through it like a sick fish in life. Human flesh. And high, of course. Agrees. Adjustment as much some people might get offended. In fact, I don't care. Here we come to the yeah, the more uh, exciting part. Yeah, what I'm here, first panel. on panel 2, it's kind of obvious, I keep it simple, white, you bastard, <laughs> white lightning bolt, from, obviously, the chalk of the north, I to troll people. And uh, yeah, don't underestimate this guy. Suck of the North decides to accidentally strikes that Chihuahua. That's out of the park. If that dog, that's out of the park. False breath. Kind of obvious. Effect. Right, so is that out there, yeah. Not well, just how the how the sound effect uh, sounds like, but. Maybe there's an, uh, another onophobia. I'm terrible. I should learn how to spell the word with it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just putting it. Yeah. 
that dog lets out one bark, one bark in its last breath. So yeah. False death. False death on the ground. The fat chihuahua can go. That's right. Here. False death on the ground. It's not. It's not a bolt, and another bolt strikes. Bolt strikes the city walls. City walls. Oh yeah. What happens next? It it sounds like thunder. So I heard the sound of the thunder. So we can add another sound effect. Around with nice faces. Face more short faces that we can. I heard the sound of the thunder. That's right, what's happening next? I hope it goes over before I go to Dutch Comic Con. Next. Here's the sound of thunder. So we're going to ask a little sound effect. Sound effect. See, there's another way to decide it. Thunder. 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 See if thunder strikes. Maybe you can find something else for that. About room or something, yeah, could have been better. So the two guards were the sound of thunder, and what happens next is. Cards is kind of fake, so I'm just asking the. Another guard. Like that. That's the card from page 4. I probably need to change the pay, change uh, the name, change the name of that uh, guard. To fit be to, uh, yeah, fit better with the rest of the page, because there will be a few rewrites going on. Maybe some extra pages and panels. And uh, maybe more or less panels. So the art shines through. From page four. Commands. This came from the main entrance. Two 
guard, the one from the support page, my support page. I'm Hi. Nah, there's nothing necessary. Lining with the gods. Nah, it's just good like this. Follow me. What's next is uh, page seven. Yeah, what we can do here is. at a certain point in time, but I'll try to uh, keep it uh, okay, simple. Oops. Yeah. Here's the guard with on page four. Yeah. 
Uh. Here. Soldiers have emotions, you know. Yeah. So, card page four. shoulders. They'll show uh, him. Yeah. I can't let a good boy go to waste either. That's right. And also, uh, just like the Mexica, Mayans also uh, bred uh, a certain type of dog for uh, to keep us a pet. Okay, nine. That. It also was uh, for meat consumption, similar to South, some Southeast Asian and uh, Asian countries. And it's, uh, yeah, I'll probably get uh, a lot of flag for this, but uh, yeah, I can change, uh, history can't be changed. It's truly happy. And I have the source to pack it up. Let it count that. A good boy. It's a waste. Either. Side. I like it. 
animals in nature. We can't let the good boy go to the wayside. Especially not in the rain. It's uh, sub 25 uh, words. What is it? Yeah, keep playing. Next is yeah. Meat is back on the menu. <laughs> so here you go. You think what I'm thinking? Yep. Meat. And dark meat is back up. And dark meat. Yeah, you can let get the food go to waste either. So, part page four. Oops. Four. And funny. Decides to, uh, yeah. Picks up, uh, yeah. Recently, yeah. Uh, Jeff. Talk. Yeah, it's one action. This is some. Fresh, let's see what's next. Some fresh static peppers. Some from a kind of a native species you get done. Red tomatoes.
from the Milpa indeed. Milpa is kind of a yeah, field where uh, kind of, yeah, going to uh, to uh, traditional uh, farming methods where you grow all kinds of crops, flowers inside the trees of the crops like mice, stuff, scattered peppers, even the uh, amaranth, all kinds of things, beans as well, tomatoes, chilies, as a fruit. Some some tribes still use it till this day, but uh, some others, uh, yeah, switch over to uh, more uh, conventional, to more yeah, conventional farming methods, and yeah, certain knowledge is uh, either yeah, either it takes a back seat or goes to waste, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending who you are uh, talk to. So I thought tells young company that takes good for some, yeah. I kind of call it uh, quits because uh, yeah, pretty much uh, did the, pretty much it uh, quite a lot for this day. Seven pages enough, and yeah, also the sword throw. Hi, it does yeah. So, So yeah, so got, yeah, he still so high picks up the recently zapped dog. And tells the young companion the card from page four, in this case. That uh, tastes good with some uh, fresh uh, scalloped peppers and red tomatoes. That uh, uh, my wife, I don't even have a wife. <laughs> His wife gave him. Him, yeah. Well, tell him. He's going to be the best group of He's going to for lunch. Lunch. Hi. For lunch. So, I saw got some fresh static peppers and red tomatoes that my wife gave me fresh from the mill bar. So, next, 19 words, one panel. Yeah. Lunch is on me. Or maybe it's something else. I saw that some fresh scat, scat peppers and red tomatoes my wife gave me from the mill bar. So what's next is... Caring is caring. Well, 
Champion to draw Hell Six. After that, I uh, kind of split the page. So, uh, yeah. up with it on the fly. Sometimes it happens. And I'll, I'll remove this part here. It's easy. Go hide for lunch. But yeah. Yonder. Yonder. Fun. I post the young guard with his weapon. The, in this case, the. the such a. such a, yeah. Uh, name I can't pronounce correctly. Ah, yeah, here it is. Taxi Malte Potsley. It's got an obsidian axe. What we can do now is we go back to page. I changed for one. That's what it's there. combination. says
At the extra panel, and I call it uh, quits for tonight. It's kind of a new uh, concept that I'm trying out. So, uh, yeah. What we're going to do next is. Uh, Seven. Burn their heads towards the reader. Stage of the card is right. Not a minute, not a minute to soon. No. So we're going to do now. Because this is too much for one page alone. And uh, sand panels is. Uh, I'll try to keep it to eight marks a page. So what I'm doing now, what I'm going to do now is Control X. So page seven. I probably have to change the order a bit. <coughs> I have to change the order of pages a bit, but uh, that's for uh, next uh, next day. 
next uh, day. Next time I try this kind of stream. So, uh, page. Uh, this will be page 8. I actually want to be on one page, but uh, it's too much and uh, it will get overcrowded. I'm not going to make the same mistake like a writer, such as uh, Tom King tried to do. Because, uh, yeah, he put way too many panels into one page and I try to keep it uh, at 8 marks. No. So, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is uh, add some. Uh, copy this kind of concept. Six panels. Please, that's the base. Change, the change of card arrives. AJ tells him it's time for lunch. And uh, yeah, they see the, see the dog that just got struck by lightning and, uh, and from the and uh, one of them comments that if you lose hit, you hit the jackpot. The other card shows him uh, the dark tail prepare for lunch. Fresh meat for free. And yeah, of course, highly excited because uh, he thinks that uh, Lord Chuck has been kind to his uh, to the elders of the royal guard. And uh, it's only a plot twist that happens where uh, yeah, they hear a familiar force voice telling them that uh, lunch hour has to wait for a minute. Yeah, it sounds like a voice of. Uh, they are all confused because they don't know where the dead came from. It's only one of the points up there. And then they see, uh, yeah. And all the other guards suddenly laughs. I also should put that on uh, the same page as well. And they see two lightning bolts, one red, one white lightning over, flying over their heads. And see the face of, uh, yeah, that is next is uh, the Jack of the North, Sack Trip Jack. And uh, Chuck Cheap Chuck, it's a mouthful, I know, approach them from from the sky, and suddenly they s they see uh, yeah, including Huna Kiel and Equag, Equag who's uh, kind of wounded at the moment and needs uh, healing from uh, the Moonshine healers. We're under the leadership of X Chill, Toka Kiel, it's the hometown of uh, Huna Kiel Kowik. Comments, hey, what 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 did I say? Is that? Or Chuck, look whose hand he's holding. What happens next is quite uh, funny. The young guard commands by Insamna and Suna Kiel, but how did that general survive? It's all supposed to be pal to see power by now, faces two old hecklers. The two old hecklers, they will be, uh, they'll eventually show up uh, in a later chapter. The two old hecklers, what I mean with that is uh, the two ba the two power gods, got the uh, yeah, old man Stingray and the uh, old Jaguar. One, yeah, they, uh, they either, yeah, they battled their, uh, the dead souls of, uh, of, uh, yeah, men, women, children who, uh, perished to, uh, Chihuahua, that's, uh, the mine underworld, the Mexica and, uh, Teotihuacanos and the Toltecs called it, uh, Mitlan, it's, uh, Nahuatl for, uh, the underworld, it's also where, uh, Mitlan Kutli, Mitante Kutli, probably misspelled the name. Got his name from. In uh, my mythology, they call it uh, they call him Sisin or Achpu. So uh, yeah, I can wait uh, to show you that one. And uh, I'm going to uh, try to switch over to uh, this one. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more uh, streams like this, see more. Uh, I'm trying to uh, work on with uh, my artist and hardworking friend Nev. This is the first page of uh, Jawa Warrior issue one, and uh, yeah, it's one of uh, it's one of uh, yeah. The first uh, chapter is uh, or issue is uh, over 80% print ready, minus the cover, and uh, it will have uh, it's for first page, second page, splash. Third page, fourth page. It's kind of based on uh, the ruins of Etna, the place of the Itza, with the two statues of the Pelor gods in front, and here's the cenote. It's pretty awesome. It's gonna get better. I'll tell you that. Never really, uh, 
It's the fourth, the fifth page. I saw love breaking up love triangles. <laughs> so, uh, there's some daisies, but after that, it ends up in the carnage. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Dr. Del Bosque, Professor Green Page 7. Page 8, got the splash page. To, uh, they'll take a beer roll later down in the story. It will show up again. It will be quite a revelation. Page 9. Quats uh, two Quetzals flying through the sky, expedition team. Page 10. They finally find something bizarre. It is known as the totem. White, black, and red vegetation. It's a scorpion totem. You know where I'm going with this. Page 12. What's this? Page 13. Page 14. So indeed, the mood changes. The plot moon. The bats flying around. But, uh... It's also, uh, yeah, kind of a spoiler alert. A forewarning of another deity. One that is not uh, a metal base and is pure evil because he he is he is that way. And certain certain uh, types of uh, bats also like to uh, <laughs> hunt scorpions and eat them. There's there are some uh, veg there also there are some herbivores as well. There are some carnivores, carnivorous species as well. After knowledge and transmission lenses. Believe me, this guy didn't start out as evil, but he's the deed possessor in Morningville later. And this is page 17. This is how page 18 looks like. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. It will be released on uh, on my own website called uh, thegeralwarrior.com, to Gumroad, also at um, I'll try out Global Comics and uh, maybe Tapas if I know how to, how to make it work. And uh, yeah, I'll try Indie Planet and uh, CBS, uh, CWS, my bad. Wellspring, bookstore later. And, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. You can uh, like, subscribe if you want to. If you have more uh, feedback to tell me, a hard work friend. Share it down in the comments. Or any private message on Twat. And uh, that's all. I hope you like this concept. But, uh, yeah, I was kind of nervous, sort of a sore throat, but uh, I did my best. It's not uh, the most spectacular stream like one from uh, John Maiden or from uh, Ethan Skyver, but uh, it's my stream. But, uh, I'm proud of what I achieved. My name is Spore Hacker. Spore Hacker out.